All right, so uh, we're back here again. So we'll start since uh, hopefully you guys have all gone through the introductory videos. And so I guess uh, for this week, we'll talk a little bit about uh, why we have theory, uh, why it's important, and then uh, move into criteria. So this will be broken up into a series of videos. So it's not gonna be some super big major one, uh, things like that. But um, yeah, so we'll talk about it. So take this at your time, take notes, whatever. So we're, we're in this class, right? And you know, it's one of those ones that, you know, a lot of people dread taking, uh, a lot of people struggle with, but it's really more important than like most people think, right? So when we think about theory, uh, we think about what makes something a science or an actual study, we focus on what exactly, how do we explain things in the world, right? And can we do it in a systematic uh, kind of way? So when we think about theories, right, we think about, um, you know, serious, intentional, um, like, explanations for observed phenomena in the world, right? So what this is, is it's not some, like, uh, casual explanation where we really, like, try to um, just say, like, you know, like, why, uh, you know, why is Leroy the way that he is? Um, and that's because, like, his mama didn't raise him right. Right. While that may be true, his mama didn't raise him right, you know, there are a lot of questions about what about the raising? How did this raising affect Leroy? Um, how did this, you know, make him the way that he is? Why is it just like the parenting, right? Why do we assume it is, right? So there's a lot of explanations that can go into place that where it leaves a lot of unanswered questions. So a theory, what it's designed to do is provide something that's systematic, that can answer those questions that we just raised, right? Because there's no reason, you know, why, you know, Leroy is the way he is. We just say it's parenting, right? But there's something about the parenting. We're also making assumptions about how parenting affects people. So what theory attempts to do is to give that explanation that gives it more power to um, do that, right? So you know, why do we even care though, right? So, you know, if we come up with these systematic explanations for why things are the way of the world, what exactly does this do for us, like as a society? And that's something that um, is actually like a super critical question, right? It's like, why do we care? Why do we go through all this rigmarole? Why, do we, why does this even like exist? Um, what, what is having an explanation do for us, right? And you can think about like this for in, on a lot of stuff, right? Like, if you ever pause to think about, let's say, for example, like occasionally I will sing uh, like little songs to myself, like da 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 da. Um, I don't know why I do that, right? If I never stop to think about it. But if I take a moment to be reflective and to think about why does this song kind of thing keep happening up, I know I do it um, because uh, my dad did it growing up, right? He did like these silly songs like all the time growing up. They were really weird. Um, he did them for everything and it was strange, right? So the point being is that if I know this explanation, I know what's why I get a little bit more uh, power in the world, right? And something that uh, used to be controlled. If you think about like our history of society, right? The way that we used to explain behavior is why there were rains, why there were diseases, why there were floods, why people died. Um, why do we have food? Why do we have food during certain seasons? Uh, how, how can we do that? If we develop an explanation as to why these behaviors exist, right, and that this explanation is correct, um, we can gain a little bit more power, more control over our world, right? So we used to think as society that a lot of things were due to displeasing gods and deities and things like that. And over time, as we grew and grew and knew, understood more about the world, and we developed explanations for as to why the world is the way that it is, we take some of our power back, right? Because if we know why something works, we can inform our responses uh, by it, right? So when we are able to have an informed response, right, we can develop policy, we can come to action for certain events, we can come through and say, like, maybe this is how we should alter our response because if something behaves in a certain way, um, we know that these are the reasons why it acts that way, we can do something about it, right? So by having this power and explanation, by, have, by informing our responses, um, we can uh, do better that way. Also, if we have an explanation for behavior uh, that is seen to be validated and true, we can make predictions about it. So 
if we know like it, we have a certain set of circumstances that come into place, um, we can predict outcomes, right? So there's a lot of great power in prediction, right? You know, if I had like an algorithm that could accurately guess the outcome of the of all regular season games all the time, I'd be a very rich man because I'd be like gambling like that all the time. And people do try to do that, right? Is to build uh, these models and prediction models to make guesses about the world in order to limit risk, to save and improve lives, and really to have like a much fairer, better outcome in the world, right? So if we're able to make predictions about the world, we've gained, you know, we've unraveled some of the mystery that we have in this world, and we are able to exert our control and dominance over it. So when we think about criminal behavior then, right, um, what we're trying to do, look at my notes, sorry, that's what I'm doing. Um, so when we have like this, right, so if we understand behaviors for human behavior, the explanations for why people are there, we can then make and develop policy responses that are meant to alleviate concerns with uh, fairness, with concerns with crime, uh, and foreign policy in order to, one, hopefully treat the person, right, and make sure they can't do it again, as well as prevent it from happening in our society and to make it better uh, in the long run, right? So that's what we're trying to do with this class, right? So theory is trying to give everyone in this class is taking it the foundation for understanding uh, why people commit crime, why it's useful, um, and uh, how we can uh, you know sort it out, right? Because it's something that plagues our society and that is maybe in some ways it's a product of people making poor decisions. It's maybe is it, is it a product of people like their environment they live on? Is it a product of stress? Is it a product of poor communal bonds? Is it a product of uh, you know other things like this because they learn this behavior? If that's true, how can we unlearn behavior? So, or you know, how do we react in certain ways, and why do people explain in a certain way or act in a certain way? So, what this class is all about, right, is that both understanding having to give us a greater understanding of our society and. Uh, by unpacking why people commit crime, the explanations for it, how we as a society react to uh, criminal behavior if we believe people behave in a certain way, and to maybe like un disentangle, unsnare why we do the things that we do. So that's really what theory is, right? Is trying to provide an explanation to understand why we do the things that we do. So, uh, next little video, so this is a little intro video, I'm probably going to do like a drawing out because we'll uh, end up, I'll introduce like some new kind of theory kind of thing, and uh, we'll talk about how do we evaluate it, right? So that'll be uh, the next series of videos coming out. So I'll see you guys next video.